So at this point in my career, I have test fired tens of thousands of different firearms, individual firearms, um, across all different makes and models, all different cartridge sizes, and everything from brand new to antique. So my name is Caleb Worley. I'm a forensic scientist too with the firearms unit in the Columbus Police Crime Lab. And then here in firearms, we look at firearms components, uh, ammunition components, and anything else related with the firearm and a crime scene. So specifically as a scientist, uh, we look at firearms for operability to determine whether or not that firearm can function and discharge a live round. Uh, we can also restore serial numbers. So if a serial number's been ground off or removed from a firearm, we can use chemicals to try to restore that serial number. Uh, these firearms are ones that we can use um, if we have a firearm in a case that's not working properly. Uh, we can test fire them uh, by taking parts from our reference guns, making that firearm work, collect those test fires, and then put those parts back into our reference firearms. And uh, sometimes when we have a serial number restoration that we need to do on a firearm, we don't necessarily know what that serial number looks like. So we can pull one of our reference firearms that has a serial number on it and see what that serial number is supposed to look like, what, what the font is supposed to look like, where the serial number actually is on the firearm, and can compare that to the firearm we have in the case. Uh, my name's Ben Jeske. I've been with the Columbus uh, Division of Police for about three and a half years now. And so what I do here in the firearm section is I work on firearms-related evidence. It could be anything from the firearm itself, uh, bullets that come from guns, uh, cartridge cases. We do serial number restorations here. Uh, things like that. Probably the thing I'd spend the most time doing is something people probably don't expect out of the job, and that's all the paperwork that comes with everything that we do. Uh, but when it, we get cases that come in, um, the first thing we'll do is we document the evidence as we get it. It's usually packaged um, in here in little plastic bags. Once we have all of that evidence, we start opening it up and documenting what's actually there in the case itself. Um, a typical case might have a firearm and some cartridge cases and a bullet to look at. And so I will get the firearm out, look at the firearm, make sure it's functioning properly, basically testing it to make sure it's safe for me to actually come and test fire. So once I have the test fires from the gun, I can take those back to my microscope room where I have a comparison microscope. And the comparison microscope, it's two microscopes that are put together with one optical bridge. So I can see two things at the same time. I've got two stages, so I can put one item on one stage and one item on another. In this case, I would put the test fire from the gun on one stage and I would put any evidence that was received from the crime scene on another. And then I'm looking at both of those items at the same time to see if they have marks that are similar from one to the next. And that's how I can determine whether the cartridge cases from the scene came out of this particular firearm or not. When it comes to the comparisons, for the most part, the forensic scientists are doing those independently, but I'll come to cases where I need to ask a colleague, like, what do you think about what I'm seeing under the microscope here? You know, one person will look at all the evidence, they'll go through and do the initial exam, and then somebody else will have to verify those results and agree with you. Uh, so it's not just one person looking at everything and saying, I think this is what it is. We do things in here as a team. Uh, everything is team oriented. There's a lot of communication among all the individual scientists, as well as all the Niven techs that um, put stuff into Niven. My name is Eliana Payne. I am a police evidence technician. I've been with the division for almost a year and a half, and I am assigned to the firearms section of the crime lab, so I work as a NIBIN technician. NIBIN is an acronym that stands for the National Integrated Ballistics Information Network. It is a program that is run by the Bureau of Alcohol, Tobacco, Firearms, and Explosives. At a basic level, NIBIN is a cartridge case database. So. It utilizes technology that acquires 2D and 3D images of specific regions of interest on cartridge casings. It then compiles all of that data and automatically correlates it. So this firearms evidence could be from guns or it could be casings that are found at scenes and it can connect these scenes to one another and provides an opportunity for collaboration across agencies, not only just within central Ohio, but the state and even all over the country. I'll case the cartridge case, which is in its holder, into this spot here. It magnets on, so it's very secure in there. And we did a good job cleaning it, and he flattened it down, so our surface is going to be even as it acquires that image. So we can look at it in different lighting. This is just ring light right over it. Now we have the six o'clock lighting. This program has brought success to our division by creating numerous leads 
and connecting hundreds of thousands of cases across the country and even within our own city. It's helped solve crimes and provide leads for investigators and ultimately provide a safer environment for the community here. What I love most about my job is that it's meaningful. I think what we do here is very important and even though we don't always see instant results of the work we do, I know it matters for the legal system and for the investigators. So I think that's something important to keep in mind every day when I come to work. And the way that the Niven program works, it stores data for years. So even if we enter something now that doesn't have any connections on it, it could become invaluable years to come as more evidence is discovered and entered into the system. What I like most about my job is that I love science and I've really enjoyed shooting guns. And being a firearms examiner was the perfect way to bring those two enjoyments together. Um, and then it's also for the betterment of the public. I think a lot of people don't know about my job is that the Niven program exists or how firearms examinations work. So we are civilians. We are not active investigators that are making arrests and interrogating people and then running in and doing tests and getting these instant results. A lot of time results take time and there's some more nuance to them. I think the thing I enjoy the most is actually helping the community. Um, I obviously have an interest in what I do, and being able to use that interest and help out uh, is, is what I really take away from the job. Some people think that in the firearms section, what we get to do is shoot guns all day, which that would be fun, but that's kind of a small portion of what we do here. Uh, when we test fire a firearm, we're only going to shoot it a few times, and then we take that and we go to the microscope. So we spend the majority of our time documenting what we see under the microscope. So the biggest misconception about my job that I always get asked by people when they find out what I do is, oh, is it just like t TV? It's not like TV and movies. It's not a really high-paced, intense environment. But what we do here still is meaningful, so there is still that sense of urgency with it. And we also have really high ethics standards, so we don't have a lot of details of cases to tell stories about those things because we want to remain unbiased. All of our results, we actually look at, we look at the evidence itself, um, and we also don't go to crime scenes. We don't solve crimes. We are simply just performing the services that are requested and issue those results to the officers involved, and that can assist them however they choose to use them. There's probably a few days uh, that stick out in, in my mind of as being memorable. The one that probably sticks out the most happened recently where um, I was involved in a uh, Dalbert testimony. And I got on the stand, I think about 10.30 in the morning, and I got off the stand about 3.30 in the afternoon. Um, there were obviously breaks in that time, but it was the longest time I had testified before. And so that has stuck around with me since then. We're supposed to be not biased at all. Um, we're, we, we're not supposed to, you know, favor the defense or the prosecution. And I think it was the second time I testified, I was on the stand for maybe 30 minutes. It was maybe 10, 15 minutes of me actually talking about what I did, my results. And that resulted in nine years in prison for this guy. Um, so just the gravity of like, you know, I go through, I do my stuff, I say my piece and give my opinion and then just the real world results of how that plays into the justice system and the results, and I guess ramifications for some of the other people going through it. Yes, I may work for the police department, um, but everything I do is to be in the courtroom and presented to help solve crime, which in turn then helps the public.